Hi, everyone. My name is Dr. Fernando Parra, Certified Information Systems Auditor here at Fresno State Christ School of Business. And I'm excited to see all of you exploring the possibility of participating in an accounting micro internship. You know, the Consulting Hub is doing a fantastic job of putting you guys and connecting you guys with practical experiences that will add value to your education. There are so many of you that may not have worked in an accounting field until now. And doing this will actually give you the ability to connect the knowledge that you gather from the classroom, all the concepts, the formulas, and all the stuff you have to learn from your for your tests. And you'll be able to now connect it to a real life scenario that will be limited in scope. So your commitment does not have to span hours and hours and hours a week, like some of our classes, right? But just a limited amount of hours, perhaps 20 hours on average, so that you can focus on delivering on a project. So what are the benefits if you're still on the edge or still deciding about why you should join the micro internship program? Number one, job experience. A lot of the positions that are out there will require that you have some level of experience before they actually hire you. Now that comes in the form of internships typically for students like you. Now, if you don't have the time, the schedule, the ability to travel, uh, or you have other commitments at home that may prevent you from participating in full-blown experiences, then your educational um, journey has been limited so far. So this will give you the opportunity to actually, again, gather some experience in chunks of uh, knowledge at a time by just focusing on mini projects, and then you can build on them as you go along. With those experiences, you'll be able to demonstrate and create a network of people that will trust that you'll be able to deliver on a future career once they see how well prepared you are. Some of the other benefits you can get from participating in this type of experience is the ability to connect with mentors, right? Nobody can do this alone. I had plenty of mentors in my life. I still have mentors in my life that guide me every day or every so often to make some of the choices that are the most difficult ones in my life. So it is nice to be able to rely on somebody or be able to connect with somebody that may give you some guidance because they've already done this in the past. It could be as simple as, you know, do you think this should be a good job for me? Do you think I have the skills? And sometimes having somebody else that can actually see you and understand you and connect that with all of their, ex all of their experience by this time would actually give you the ability to make a better decision. Having mentors, once again, can give you answers to the most basic things or the most sophisticated things, like what shoes should I wear for this interview? Is it okay if I smoke during the interview or say this kind of things? Can I get political? Any, any of the stuff that you may take for granted and they may actually have a better take on that for you. Third, it would help you guide your career goals. So number one, by actually doing some of the jobs that accountants are meant to do, you'll actually get to decide what you like the most. As you are aware, accountants bring value to organizations externally, internally, from within, outside, and in many different ways. You have accountants that are focused on providing tax advice, accountants that look at your compliance with tax regulations. There are accountants that are going to be looking at risk management. There are accountants that will be looking at auditing or assurance services from within or from the outside. Others provide consulting. Others will give you guidance on ways that you can make your business succeed based on the information that drives the language of business, right? Accounting. So, what do you want to do? Are you certain that you want to be a tax advisor? And have you heard about the call CPA uh, or the CPA evolution that's coming up pretty soon? So, as you all heard, in 2024, the CPA licensure is going to change for everyone in the U.S., not just California. And what that entails is that you'll have a core CPA license, and then you have three different specialties that you'll be able to gather. Number one will be one on just taxing and uh, on taxation and 
uh, consulting services on that front. Then you'll have reporting, which will involve data analytics and being able to report and, and, and generate those numbers as an accountant. And then finally, you'll also have accountants and information systems and controls. So again, you have three different areas that require accountants to be fully versed in different skills. And this will give you a chance to help you guide your choices and where you want to become a specialist in the future. Number four, you'll be able to create a professional network that will be so valuable for you, right? So if you don't have an actual mentor that has lived a lot of, of experiences that can guide you, you can still have a professional network of friends, colleagues that will know where, where is the best place to advance my career. They may give you all the inside scoop on whether you really want to be in a firm that's valuing your service, that makes a significant impact on our community, whether, you know, the stress level from that job is proper or not. And what about work-life balance? Do you have a nice boss? Do they give you coffee breaks? Do they bring nice uh, dinners when you have to stay working during the tax season 10 hours to 15 hours a day, right? So creating that professional network of future contacts that you will be able to leverage in the future so that you may either advance your career, get a better placement, or have future clients if you decide to ever go solo or with some of your colleagues and create your own practice. In addition, this is going to be a strong resume builder. Once again, these experiences demonstrate that you know how to get it done, or at least they've already done it in the past. And they can always call that person or that business or that organization to see if you did a good job. So as you engage in these activities, make sure you give it your best, right? Because you want to make sure that you are letting people know that you're ready for this job. Now, it's okay to learn as you go along. You were not born with all this knowledge. The fact that they are giving students like you a project where you can learn from speaks volumes of these organizations. They're not just asking for cheap labor. No, they're actually trying to help you guys come up with better experiences so that in the future they can ask you for bigger assignments. So think about that. You have a great opportunity to build a resume while contributing to small businesses, organizations, and so forth. This leads me to my final point, right? You can secure with these performances good references and recommendations that you'll be able to use in the future. So as you engage once again, think of everybody that's working with you and your team or by yourself. And the actual delivery and how much you promise and how much you deliver on the projects that you engage. So let's look at the types of micro internships. There's some typical micro internships that are listed on your website right now. You know, you have some project costing, accounts receivable AG reports, accounts re reconciliations. Again, these are very limited in scope projects that can be done within 20 hours, right? What is project costing? You may be given a particular set of products and services and you'll be able to exercise your wonderful cost accounting skills that you might have taken from one of my colleagues or perhaps you were in my, in my class, right? For cost accounting. So again, this is an exciting way to actually learn how things get priced. You know, the decisions of the cost that you assign to any particular product or service will impact your decisions on pricing and whether you will remain competitive in the market. So that is why it's so important that you, get, you or they get somebody like you to be able to share some of your knowledge while you learn on applying this in future reference. So again, you have accounts receivable agent reports. Again, that is pretty simple, and we'll get into all of the details of what each one of these projects means in a, in a second. So now, other types of projects include direct cost billing, right? There's a lot of organizations that actually look at project costing, and they're not able to track things well. And they may rely on a good accountant like you to be able to say, this is how we keep track of direct labor, my materials, this is the cost billing system, maybe give them a fancy spreadsheet that they can use with simple pivot tables so that they can generate those 
billings that they should generate for their clients in the future. There are other uh, clients that may need preparation of financial statements. Think of all the small businesses that are in, in our community. They really drive our economy, but they don't have time to specialize in accounting while they're serving ice cream or making tacos or empanadas or the greatest burger in the Central Valley, right? You may have a farmer that is dedicated just to their farm. Nonetheless, they may not know how to put all of these documents together in a manner that would be consistent with GAAP so that they can turn around and look for the latest loan um, for additional capital investments so that they can have the right equipment to be more effective and efficient in the future. Sometimes they rely, they need to rely on somebody like you to just create a simple financial statement. And they may just have a bunch of documents that they will give you in a shoebox and say, can you just help me fill out this application? And so there'll be some of that guidance in here. Uh, same thing for loan application assistance. You know, you have financial statements for either tax purposes. You may also have it for loan applications or other types of um, engagements. Um, one of the things that you could help as well would be to develop a self-employed tax return, right? A lot of these small businesses don't know how to file their own taxes and they rely on expensive accountants or expensive businesses out there uh, that are really prohibitive for some of the small businesses that are, that are just starting. So there is hundred, there are hundreds of small businesses that could benefit from you and you could benefit from that experience because in the future, if you're going to be doing taxes, you want to know what filing a Schedule C is all about. Um, other exciting projects that I've been asked in the past uh, to provide assistance with through students would be to you know, set up a QuickBooks online. That, that is sometimes difficult and intimidating for somebody who has never done or set up their books on a system. So, so you may have prepared the financial statements for a business, and now they want you to not abandon them and set them up with a software that could keep track of this going forward. So this is an exciting time for you guys to be able to come in and demonstrate your technology skills in accounting uh, by setting up uh, QuickBooks or something similar to uh, help your clients. Finally, I would like to discuss in, in a few moments what setting up uh, a Shopify store is all about. You know, again, QuickBooks Online is an accounting information system. So is Shopify, right? You're having to put all the logistics together of, you know, selling your products, which you could probably think that's a more of a marketing software, but the reality is it's all driven by cost and revenue, et cetera. You want to make sure that it connects well with your QuickBooks so that the accounts jive well together and you're not having to duplicate the entries in your point of sale system or your Shopify store that goes online and then having to download all those transactions and repeat them all again into QuickBooks. There's ways to make sure that you plan on integrating all of these different software applications. And I'd like to show you how that is done. So these are just some of the many different types of micro internships. I'll be providing individualized videos. So click on the one you like the most or click on the ones that you might be interested in. So um, finally, I'm going to give you some general recommendations so that you think about this before you engage with any client. Number one, number one, 101 is to understand the scope of work, right? Make sure that both you and your client understand what you're getting into. What is it that they want? Is it that it, is it just a financial statement or do they want you to fix their lives? Or, you know, do you, do they just want something so limited that you may be done in an hour and they may not know about that. So make sure that there's a clear understanding of what your project is and that you communicate that with your stakeholders so that you can have a fruitful uh, relationship going forward. Remember, some of these folks, you'll be using them as a reference and you want to make sure that from the beginning, you're formal, you're punctual, you are delivering on your promise and that you are clear as to what the expectations should be from both ends. Another recommendation I have for you is to always conduct a project risk analysis. What could go wrong? And think about it. You know, if you're working in a particular 
area of the city? Does that mean you are able to walk around at any time of the night or at any time of the day to be, uh, you know, uh, if, if you are not somebody that would feel comfortable doing so uh, as a student? There's other types that are other things that are important right now, such as, you know, exposure to COVID and other related diseases. Uh, but there are other things that are not necessarily related to the environment or the risk associated, the physical risk associated with uh, the establishment that you're going to be connecting with, such as, you know, what if there's a bunch of holes on the street and then you fall into one of them? So these are some of the things that you want to look around for, do an inspection, do an assessment, and also look at your project and say, what could go wrong before I commit to this project? What if I don't understand how to do A, B, and C? And then come up with actual solutions to be able to mitigate those risks, right? Well, I will know that I'm not going to walk down that street full of holes because I already know that it's full of holes, right? So I will take an alternative route. The parking is a mess. So I'm not going to expose myself to being towed if I choose the right parking, I'll be on time, et cetera. In terms of the project, if I know that I'm weakest in this area, I will seek partnerships with other students that have a stronger knowledge on this particular area, while I bring more knowledge on area B. Again, being able to understand where you could fail is important before you engage somebody, right? Because if you're overconfident and oversell something, They'll always remember you as a student that overpromised and failed on that delivery. Um, next, have a learning plan. All of these conversations that you had, all of this analysis, putting in writing, make sure that you have some learning objectives. What am I going to learn out of this experience? I'm going to learn how to do A, B, C. I'm going to apply my skills and do a tax return so that they can file it on their own. Or I'm going to just compile a bunch of paperwork together and make sure that they can generate their own statements. Or I'm going to do the generation of those statements for them. Am I going to teach them how to do it in the future? All of that has to be clearly defined so that everybody's on the same page. Again, communicate, 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 and deliver on your promise. Never under-deliver, always over-deliver. So I'll see you in a bit with the next, uh, the next few projects. Explanations. Best of luck to you.